Hey, what's going on guys? Evan from Model3D and today's video is just going to be another update on the One How Duplicator 7. I've had a bit more time to play with it now, um, I've got more prints out and I just wanted to give my kind of final update before the actual release of the new version. Um, so basically before I go ahead, uh, One How will be releasing a new updated modified version of what I and other people have sent. They sent out 50 of these uh, beta units as you can call them. Um, and they didn't know really what needed changing. They were at a point where they believed it was a decent machine. So they sent out some beta units to find out other people's opinions, what needs changing, what needs kind of like revamping, what needs relooking at, all that kind of stuff. So over on the Facebook page, um, if you want to join that group, I'll pop a link down in the description. Um, but there's been a few of us that have been going through consistently and kind of bringing up our um, issues, bringing up any problems we've had. Some people have had. Um, broken LCD displays, um, some people have had like overheating issues, some people have just had all these different kind of problems. So so the manager and many people that work at OneHow were actually in this group and we were laying our problems back to them for them to fix for the new version. The new version will be available in March. Um, you can actually pre-order now by contacting OneHow in the email down in the description. The price for the final unit will be $400 plus postage, which is amazing which is an absolute bargain price for what the detail you can get from this machine the reason i haven't updated sooner is because the resin that shipped with the machine the one hair resin that worked really really well i was really pleased with uh run out there was only a tiny little bottle that came with the machine um so i had to source another resin so i went with what m many other people use for their sla dlp machines which is uh, maker juice so i bought a bottle of like that the first one i had i had really really bad kind of like settling issues um, the pigment would settle out from the resin and it was just it was a mess So I contacted iMaker the company I bought it from and they replaced it for me The first one I had was the Maker Juice G plus and that was the one I had all the issues with So after talking with the lead chemist for Maker Juice, I went with the SF which is like a semi flexible resin um, Received it received it in black and that still didn't work I believe that with this machine not having a tilt and peel feature, for example on the form after the one layer is cured, it will tilt the bed and peel off the part. Well this machine doesn't have that so you're not technically agitating the resin and you're not mixing anything so it's just basically sat in there and the only kind of movement it's having is when the build plate is just going up and down on the z-axis. So that's not really enough kind of movement to agitate the resin which is why I was getting these settling issues. So that, along with the problem I had with my FEP tape, which was which was everyone said to buy a 50 micron FEP tape, which is what apparently OneHow uses. Um, I purchased that and it was really, really thin compared to the OneHow stuff. Um, and it wasn't releasing, it wasn't peeling correctly. I was having really, really bad issues with that. Turns out that OneHow shipped with about 140 micron, which is a lot more than 50. So I... Um, Ordered some more. I got um, luckily one of the guys on the Facebook group sent me his spare sheet from Wanhao, so I could keep testing and I'm back running and back working perfectly. The machine ships with this little scraper, and at first I was taking my parts off the build plate, but after someone suggested keep that just for primarily taking off any failed prints off the FEP, um, I've been using a razor blade to take off any prints off the build plate, and it works a lot better. So yeah, after I got the new thicker FEP and I bought a new resin, which I went with the fun to do. Um, unpigmented clear resin. I've had absolutely astonishing prints like really really blow me away. So in terms of prints that I've made with this resin um, I started off with a few smaller bits. I made this little lighthouse. Um, this was the lighthouse on Thingiverse. I'll have all the links to these down in the description but this was at 100 micron layers. With the naked eye you couldn't even see the layers. It's really really nice. It's really clean. And then I got a cheap little macro lens from my phone and went up close and you can see the layers. You can see where it's kind of like stepping but the steps are really, really accurate, so you don't see them when you're not kind of in macro, and it, it looks really nice. And that's 100 microns, that's the lowest kind of quality you can go, really. So once that was a successful test, and I had kind of messed around with the settings, I, I found that a 35 second bottom layer to really, really cure it, make sure it sticks to the bed, nice and strong, any support is super strong, and it's gonna hold apart for the entire print. And then five seconds per layer, um, it worked out really well, so I knew that that worked, so it was time to go into the, the more detailed, higher quality prints. Next up was this. This is the Millennium Falcon print. I Like I said, I'll have a link down in the description if you want to print this yourself. Uh, this was printed at 50 microns, and I've got some close-up photos here. It's, it's, it blew my mind, it's absolutely beautiful. Even the parts on the little flight deck here came out perfectly. All the little guns and the turrets on top. Every little detail is just astonishing, and you can't see any 
build lines, you can't see any print lines no matter where you are. There's no abnormalities in it at all. It's just it's really, really nice. Uh, this took about six and a half hours to print at 50 microns. So then I really wanted to push the machine. I wanted to kind of try and see how far it could really go. So I suggested to print, print this tiger ring. Um, this was printed at 25 microns. The teeth used really, really light support um, just to print obviously both the teeth and a little bit in the mouth. The strength of this resin is really nice as well because it's got a slight little flex. So I think anything that you want to kind of be a snap fit part will just have just enough bend to work. But overall, I think this printer for its price range, especially now that they've announced it's going to stay at $400, is absolutely outstanding. It, I've said in my previous videos that the usability is a bit kind of on the lower end and especially that you need to tether it to a computer but there's um, a few people on the Facebook group that are working on using Nano DLP. They've had successful prints with Nano DLP which is essentially a Raspberry Pi with a program on it to run everything from the Raspberry Pi. So they are printed successfully with that. I was looking more towards getting decent prints, trying out good resin, then you guys know whether this printer is actually worth it. So I just wanted to give that update to maybe sway your opinion if you were a bit kind of pushed back from my last video. One have said that they're going to send me the new version so I can do a comparison video, let you guys know what the new one actually looks like. Um, I've heard rumors of um, an LCD panel on the front to give you build times. Um, I've heard all that kind of stuff. There needs to be a little gasket in between the top housing and, and I believe that they're going to have an acrylic strip in the top housing so you can see how the printer's doing while it's printing rather than having a full blacked out display. So that'd be cool. I will make sure to update you guys when I get that machine. Um, I'll probably do a live stream um, of the unboxing, kind of show you comparisons, all that kind of stuff. So if you want more frequent updates, you can follow me on Twitter over at EvanModel3D. Um, follow me on Instagram at um, EvanMorgan93. And make sure to click like down below if you like this video. Uh, make sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more of them. And I'll see you in the next video.